in 2011, 17 year old Blake Chappelle went missing and two months later was found murdered in a heartbreaking unsolved crime that remains a cold case pretty much even now 12 years later I briefly spoke about this crime a while back but just last week law enforcement held a press conference where they announced that they are rejuvenating or reviving the investigation into what happened to Blake Chappelle. The whole thing has just been so heartbreaking for the family to not know what happened. So everyone's trying to piece together what happened to help get justice for Blake Chappelle. Hello, my name is Brent Blankenship. I'm the police chief for the city of Noonan Police Department. Uh, we would like to uh, speak to you today and give you an update on a homicide case from back in 2011 involving Blake Chappelle. Uh, we'd like to provide you an update on that case. Detective Marcos Gonzalez is here and he's going to provide you that information. On October 16, 2011, a 17-year-old boy named Blake Chappelle was reported missing in Noonan, Georgia. His remains were discovered December 19, 2011, and it was determined a homicide is what led to his death. An investigation commenced in which all leads were followed, but as of this date, there has been no arrest. As we approach the 12-year anniversary of this homicide, the Noonan Police Department remains committed to following any and all leads. This includes re-examining old leads. We are determined to solve this homicide to include adding another detective to this case. A thorough review by the Noonan Police Department has identified additional steps to solving this homicide. We appeal to the public to contact us if you have any information regarding the death of Blake Chappelle. In 2011, we received a letter with an anonymous tip. Several years later, we received a second letter. It is our belief that these letters were written by the same person. To the sender, you can remain anonymous, but please contact us again. If you have any information regarding this case, we encourage anyone to contact us at the Noonan Police Department. This investigation will conclude only when those responsible for the homicide of Blake Chappelle are held accountable and are prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Thank you. 17-year-old Blake Chappelle. He was your average good kid who was fun and outgoing. He had a lot of friends here and everyone loved Blake and vice versa. Blake loved everyone else too. All right, preliminary to acrophobia. This is gonna be epic. Just like any other typical teenager in high school, Blake hung out with friends and he had numerous girlfriends. In May of 2011, Blake was involved in an altercation where at that time his then girlfriend, her name was Skylar, uh, she was feuding with her parents. So she decides she's going to run away and she leaves a note for her parents saying that she's leaving with Blake. As this girl Skylar's parents are looking for her they come right here to this neighborhood and they find both Skylar and Blake together so this girlfriend Skylar her dad his name is Earl he gets furious he then causes a scene and he actually viciously attacks Blake Blake was uh, beat up really bad they took pictures of him when this report was made it would only go on to get worse for Blake from here because this girl's father, the very next day, he goes down to the police department and files a report against Blake for custodial interference. So not only did this guy beat him up, but then he goes down and has Blake charged 
And as soon as Blake found out that there was a warrant out for his arrest, he immediately came and turned himself into the Clayton County Sheriff's Department. Blake wound up spending 16 days sitting in jail because he could not afford the $2,500 bond to get out. But eventually, uh, police talked to several eyewitnesses from the time, and they basically said what really happened, and all the charges were dropped against Blake, and he was released. Fast forward now to October of 2011, Blake and his new girlfriend, Ryan, are preparing to go to their first high school homecoming dance together as a couple. Blake is excited and he gets all dressed up. Blake's mother takes him over to his girlfriend's house so they can pose for pictures together before the dance. At about 5.30 p.m., once they got done taking all those pictures together, Blake and Ryan head right here to this steakhouse, this Japanese steakhouse, to have dinner. They're making a whole night of it, a romantic, you know, like date evening. Both Ryan and Blake attended school here at East Coweta High School, right here behind me. And this was also the location of that homecoming dance. So Ryan and Blake, they were in here dancing and having a good time. <laughs> After they uh, were in here at the homecoming dance for several hours, at around 10 p.m. that night, Blake's mom comes here and she pulls up out here in the parking lot and waits for them and they wrap up in there at the dance and come out and get in the car. And then Blake's mom then drops Ryan off at her home and then she takes Blake over to a friend's house a friend named Austin and he was going to be staying with this Austin for the night. We know that some point after Blake was dropped off at Austin's house that Blake and Austin leave that home and they walk down the street right here to this gas station but when they got here it was closed so they walk here but they find out it's closed and then they kind of got to immediately turn around and they start walking back towards Austin's house. We also know that a few hours after that, at around 2 a.m. in the morning, Blake gets a text message from Ryan where she's asking him to come to her house and to sneak into her room. Blake uh, agrees, and he he's not driving, so he has to walk there. And it's several miles away, so it takes Blake a good couple of hours to walk from Austin's home to Ryan's home. So by the time he gets there, it's like 4 or 4.30 in the morning. Blake is able to sneak in to Ryan's house and he gets into her bedroom successfully and then they're in there together for about 30 minutes, but they're making a whole lot of noise. But they wind up waking up Ryan's family. They come in the room and they catch Blake and Ryan in there together and he panics. He jumps out the window and he starts walking, headed back to Austin's house. Now, we know that the entire time he was walking between Ryan's house and Austin's house, he was texting with her. He was texting back and forth. We know that at some point he sent a text message to Ryan's mother telling her that he was sorry, that he had disobeyed her rules, and these type things. And then we know after that that Blake sent a message to Ryan, and he tells her that he is being stopped by a police officer. Although Blake sent that text message that said he was stopped by an officer the noonan police department and the coweta county sheriff's office have both stated that they have no record of any officer stopping blake that night blake said in his message that the officer asked him why he was out walking past his curfew and blake made up a lie and told him that he was just going to the store he didn't want to tell him he was coming from his girlfriend's house. But if it's true an officer did stop Blake, this officer would have been the last person to see Blake Chappelle alive. The very last person. At around 5.30, about an hour after he left Ryan's home, Blake would send his final message to her, and it was just simply a complaint about how cold it was outside. And then after that, there was nothing. 
The next morning, on October the 16th of 2011, Blake's mother, she can't get a hold of him. She's trying to call him. She calls Austin. She calls Ryan. She can't get a hold of Blake at all. They start calling other people that Blake hangs out with, and no one knows where he's at. Blake's mother frantically calls the Newton Police Department here, and a missing persons report is started. For two whole months, there were no signs of Blake Chappelle anywhere. Search parties were formed to walk the, the, the path between Ryan's house and Austin's house, going through the woods and checking in every nook and cranny that they could in hopes that they could find something of Blake's. But they never had any luck. They never found any sign of Blake at all. Then on December the 19th of 2011, a passer buyer, they were here in the area and they were walking by. As they look off down to the side of this bridge where this creek is, they see what they think is a person laying off on the side of the creek down there. Law enforcement quickly arrives here on scene. They go down there to the side of the creek and they recover those remains. He was wearing nothing but like a white undershirt and underwear he had no pants on no shoes none of that there was obviously no kind of identification on him it was very clear to investigators as soon as they got down there though that this this uh these remains that they had recovered they had suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the head a few days later on december the 22nd those remains that were found right here at white oak creek right here where i'm standing they they this is where they saw the body they were positively identified as Blake Chappelle. Blake's remains being found right here in this creek, it just, it, it completely left investigators with more questions than it did answers even after finding his remains. How did he get down there? Was he killed down there or was he just like tossed over the side of the bridge down there in the creek? It, it, it left them with more questions than anything. It's not easy to get down there to that creek. I can't find a single way to get down there to it. So, what happened? Once it was discovered that this was Blake, law enforcement came back here to this creek area and they combed from one side to the other, up and down it for miles. They knew at the time of his disappearance that he was texting with Ryan. So he should have had a cell phone with him and numerous other items like his wallet and other clothing and this kind of stuff. None of these items were ever found. And even as we stand here today, these items have still not ever been recovered. Without any more information coming in, Blake's like uh, disappearance case and subsequent murder, uh, it went cold and that's where it's been ever since. At one point, law enforcement offered up a $20,000 reward for information that, you know, about Blake's death and that led them to a conviction of a killer. And this was the largest reward offering that the city of Noonan, Georgia had ever offered for information like that on any case. And the hopes were that it would entice someone to come forward and that's why they had it so high. But no one ever did. There is multiple theories that's been thrown out there as to what could have happened to Blake. One, the officer. The supposed officer that Blake texted Ryan and said that stopped him and asked him about why he was out after his curfew. That's the first theory. Could this guy have not even been an officer at all? Who was he? The police have no report, so what happened there? The second theory that was thrown out was that ex-girlfriend's father, Earl Jones, because he had just beaten up Blake months prior, I think he probably was at the top of the list. The third theory in this was, what if Blake's, what if his own friends were involved somehow in his death? Near the same day that Blake's body was discovered down in the creek, one of Blake's best friend couples it was a guy and a girl the girl she broke up with this guy who was one of blake's best friends okay now normally a couple breaking up this wouldn't set off any red flags this wouldn't do anything but the timing of it is what started to make people think people were speculating that maybe this guy was involved in blake's death 
once the girl found out she broke up with him but even though people have asked her she really hasn't given a reason as to why she broke up with him the day or close to the day Blake was found on top of that it was revealed to Blake's family months later that the night Blake died he was staying at his friends Austin's house and supposedly someone else was actually another guy he was actually staying there at the house that time but this piece of information was never reported to police it this guy was never talked to his name was never mentioned until long after Blake had been discovered it all equals up to create a large amount of suspicion why was this person not mentioned when it all happened if he was there why wasn't he talked about so the police could interview him and these kind of things also after his death some of these who were supposed to be close friends of Blake's quit talking to Blake's family altogether it is like they tried to avoid him now because of all of this together the girl breaking up with the guy and several of these guys they stopped talking to the family it has definitely made Blake's family think what if something happened that night and Blake's friends are responsible for this Blake Chappelle's family and friends still fight every single day for information they've got Facebook groups going on and web pages completely devoted to Blake's murder Last year, the Noonan Police Department set up their own webpage for their unsolved cases, which featured Blake's story at the very top, but still no one has come forward. This whole story is just crazy, which is why as soon as I was contacted about coming here and telling Blake's story, I immediately jumped at the chance. One would have to think that there is more to this story than what's being released to the public. For a teenager who was seemingly liked by just a about everyone to you know disappear and then show up murdered if you have any information about the death of Blake Chappelle please contact the Newton Police Department and maybe you can catch a slice of that reward money that is gonna do it for this video today from here in Noonan Georgia and the murder of Blake Chappelle thank you all so much for watching this video guys I really appreciate it if you're new here, go down, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you're interested in helping support this channel, there's links in the description box below you can check out. But really, I just, I can't thank you enough for watching the videos. That means the world to me. You know, I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.